All right, well, it is time to start the decals. Or jackals, I guess. Uh, that seems more European, but uh, I guess I've always said decals. So they are definitely not all going to be used by me. I have done enough of the custom painting already that several of the decals are definitely not necessary. Um, so I will be going through and selectively choosing which decals to use. Like I'm definitely going to use both of the ear pieces, um, the, the logo on the chest, the, the Mandalorian logo on the shoulder, all of those things. Um, and the stripes on the helmet. But some of the other things like the gold discs here, those are already there. So, you know, I definitely don't need all of that. Um, and from what I can tell, the colors here that are on the stripes uh, that would be going on to here, these don't seem quite as accurate. And I, I guess I don't know for sure, obviously. Um, but from what I can tell in the images, it looks like those studs that stand out there are more of the red color from his armor pieces. Uh, once it's all weathered, it should be nice and dark in between in the crevices and stuff. So, so I think that's more accurate. Um, the bit of yellow that's on that tool or whatever it happens to be on his shin there, I just went with the same yellow as the shin guards. Um, and the shin guards, once they're weathered and everything else, definitely going to look a lot darker. But, again, based on the photos that I find online between the life-size figure and the legendary scale figure uh, from Sideshow Collectibles, this seems to be a good balance, and even those two are slightly different. And, depending on the lighting of what you find from actually movie images, uh, it, it's all kind of challenging to tell. So, it's all an homage, right? It's all just close and it's it's a version of Boba Fett. There's no way to actually have it be absolutely screen accurate, again, because the lighting is always changing. Um, there is information online about the Pantone colors that they, that they were picking or used for the armor bits. So I guess there is a way to be more screen accurate than what this is. Anyway. It's time for decals. So, I am going to get to it, and I guess I will be moving the rest of this out of the way. I just think that turned out really cool, uh, the, the yellow on there. Uh, as, as far as I can tell, again, pretty close to what it's going to be, or what it should be, I should say. We'll get that all out of there. Um, so the decals that are going on him and on the, the backpack piece... Hopefully will be pretty straightforward. Um, I always use Microsol and Microset. Microset, I should have said that backwards or I said that backwards. Microset is the first one you use and it essentially goes under the decals. Um, and then after it's dry and I never actually wait for things to dry, um, the Microsol goes on top and then helps the decal settle down into all of the surface detail of the model itself. Um, and it doesn't quite get to a painted on look because there still is a slight surface change there, um, but it's really close. And then if you do surface coat the model, which you always should anyway to protect the decals, um, it will be so well embedded on a side or an object of this size. I don't think you'd ever really notice an edge. Um, if you had the perfectly polished car model, then decals actually do have a noticeable edge to them. Um, and after a couple coats of clear, you need to super fine sand that edge and clear again. Uh, just and then that's one of those that it's pretty specific for the high-end, super smooth surface things like car models. Um, for something like Boba Fett, having a little bit of painted edge on something isn't going to be a problem because there's also going to be a ton of weathering and all of the decals that are going on are going to get beat up. Um, not necessarily scratched off, but a paint layer on top to make them look like they've been scratched off because um, we got to get all the way down to bare metal in spots. So with all of that rambling said, um, it is time to start the decals.
All right, so while that sits in a little dish of water for a second, I'll get out my Microsaw, I'm sorry, Microset. And this one is going to go right on that surface on the bottom of his arm there. I don't really know what this stuff is, but it sure has a, a vinegary smell to it. So it wouldn't be impossible for there to be some form or level of vinegar to this. I don't see an actual ingredient list. surface change. To work over right here. But I think that appears to be in as close to the right spot as it can be, at least for now. All right, so we'll let that sit. And then that one, we'll come back with the micro saw in just a minute and give that a coat and help that settle down. Those two, um, because they have to deform over quite a, a big surface change, are going to take several coats. So I'm going to work those for a little bit uh, before I move on to any of the others, uh, just so I don't accidentally move those. Um, so I'm going to just kind of get those two finished, and then I'll move on to the others, because things like the shoulder pad will go really quickly, right? It's a pretty smooth the surface. Um, the one on the helmet, the earpiece is all that. Pretty straightforward. Uh, these two definitely have to be deformed quite a bit. Um, so fortunately, the Microsol takes care of that, right? It makes them quite plasticky and able to form around those large surface changes, but it does take several applications and time of just slowly working it over the surface as it kind of gets a little melty and stretchy. All right, so I'm just gonna keep doing that and I'll be back in just a bit. Hopefully, that didn't actually affect the decal. And I'm hopeful that the white in that part of the chest right there is going to make it so that the red illuminated numbers actually look like they're illuminated numbers. At least that's the hope. We'll see what happens. 
And if you didn't notice, the decal that I had started there did not work. Um, the decal would have been fine, but I tried to get it to conform to all of the little buttons there far too quickly. Um, and when I used the Q-tip to mash it in, uh, it basically just tore apart and half of it stuck to the Q-tip. So, so I removed it. Right there. Now I just gotta leave it alone, let it set up a little bit, and then a couple more coats of the Microsol, and it should be good. It's hard to say exactly where this lines up, but it looks like it's pretty close being centered on the side of the head. So let's get some of the extra water there. say for sure looks like about three four of the bars actually make it to the edge of the eye piece so I think that's good I think the distance off of the red looks right up the extra microsol or the microset and then a nice layer of the microsol and I don't want to really move this around while I'm applying it I'm just trying to dab it on and so I don't do that compound corner right there is not perfect but I really don't think you'll ever be able to see it so we should be all right So now it is time to get the weathering going. Um, so I'm pretty sure that all of this will be accomplished with these little bits of sponge um, that I tore off of this little bit of packaging sponge. Um, so I've got four of them. I'm pretty sure I only need four colors for this. As far as I can tell, um, I'll need a little bit of the Everlyn Sunset to mess up the logo there. I'll need a little bit of my Death Guard Green to kind of mess up all of this. 
Uh, and then what I think it's Ashen Gray. Um, it's going to be on the forearm, a large patch. Um, and again, any weathering can be as much or as minimal as you would like it to be, right? I mean, the shots we see of Boba Fett in Empire Strikes Back are one stage of the weathering of his armor, right? Like, you could model him and paint him when his armor's brand new and you wouldn't want to weather him at all. So again, completely up to you how you approach all of this, of course. Um, but I'm just gonna use my tweezers here and take little chunks of this foam and then I can kind of fold it up and I will dip it into some paint uh, and then dab off a lot of that paint on the paper towel before I start kind of dabbing it around on him. So I'm just gonna start with kind of messing up the logo here a little bit. So I'll get a little bit of paint on my sponge. Let's get those out of the way. So there, and then move most of the paint off. And then I can kind of just beat up around the sides a little bit, right? We don't have to kill it completely. Uh, and then there are going to be washes and stuff that go on, so we'll beat that up a little bit more even. But just that, I mean, all by itself is pretty good. Damage that corner just a little more. Right, and so I can build it up in layers with kind of different spots on the sponge to make sure that the texture gets varied. All right, we can leave that. Right, and then that bit of sponge can just get set to the side and I'll move on to kind of the next color uh, which I don't know I think too big of a piece it's very staticky Let's see, I think probably better to do the dark gray on the forearm here. And the, the pictures um, from Sideshow Collectibles of this, it is like solid gray. So I don't want it to be quite that damaged. All right, then we'll put a little bit of that maybe onto the face because we're gonna end up uh, putting some metallics on there as well. All right, beating that up a little bit more. And then I think there's a little bit of that dark gray. Got some edges there. some of the spots on his armor that are going to get more of the metallic. Just help beat him up a little. Just get the edges a little rougher.
right, and then grab another chunk. <laughs> and we're gonna get a little metal. Well, <laughs> not necessarily metal, more the lead belcher paint from Citadel. And then we're gonna kinda sparingly add it into some of the battle damaged areas. I don't know if I want it on his legs down there. Um, some of the images I believe there's like a metallic patch in there. Um, I'm not super concerned about that. I'll probably go back over that a little bit. I think that got a little heavy. Right, and then with some little scratches. Some of the images have his face shooting, like the red of his face, really beat. stripes here. stuck to my arm. <laughs> I'm gonna get a little bit more gray. Add a little more density. Just a matter of some simple washes to bring out the last of the detail. And I'm just kind of bringing that back a little bit, a little, a little much there. That's working pretty good. Got to admit, I was pretty hesitant of this step. It's kind of one of those things you could really, you know, get to a point if you don't like it, you'd almost have to start over. And that was a little nerve wracking, but when I kind of just remembered that the stage of weathering we go to here doesn't have to be movie accurate 
right? I don't necessarily care about exactly what his weathering or anything else looks like on screen. Um, he's a pretty recognizable character no matter what I do. So the idea that I can show his armor really at any stage of weathering that I feel like really just frees you up to not have to worry about really a whole lot of anything. Alright, let's see. His backpack doesn't have a lot of crazy weathering going on or distress, I suppose. I believe there's a pretty big scuff right here that again not necessarily worried about replicating but we can show it you know at a at a stage that at least to me seems to make sense right i as a bounty hunter i don't think he would be concerned about updating the paint on things as much as being concerned with functionality so as long as it's working all right who cares if the paint's chipping which you know is where the series once Boba Fett kind of takes over and updates the paint on his armor, right? That also makes sense for the point in the timeline and what's going on. Um, and the new armor, and the not new armor, I suppose, really, but the new paint scheme um, and the cleaned up look with the, the black kind of robe cape piece. Not my favorite look for Boba Fett. Um, it just feels too clean to me. Right, and it's not wrong, it's cool, but I don't know. I, I don't, don't really like him all cleaned up and nice. <laughs> well, that's supposed to be a bad guy, I don't know. I suppose he's still a bit of a bad guy, but Boba Fett trying to do right by people just doesn't, I don't know. It's a good show, I liked it. I think that feels pretty good. I don't want to beat up too many edges too much more. It is going to get toned back. All of it is going to get toned back a little uh, when I do the washes. So, again, I'm not too worried about it too much. There's, there's another layer to go on. But I think as far as battle damage, I think that looks pretty darn good. I like it. I like him beat up. All right. Once that's set up, uh, I will be back and we'll get the washes all finished up. All right. So basically, um, Agrax Earthshade and a beater brush. And that's about all I need. Um, I don't think I'm going to need Nuln Oil, but maybe um, just a little bit around some of like the, the seams on the arms to emphasize the shadow. Um, but for clothing and dirt, um, Nuln Oil is a little harsh, I think. 
So I think most of this is going to be Nuln Oil in its, or I'm sorry, Agrax Earthshade. And it's not going to be uh, insanely heavy. So I'll start with his feet, where it'll be a little heavier, right? His feet are going to be dirty. Probably the dirtiest part of him. And then I would imagine less and less as it goes up. So we'll start a little heavier toward the bottom. And then once we're up a little further, I'm going to get some water on my brush. And I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to really thin that down and just kind of start pushing it back down the leg. So I'll keep a little bit up at the top. Just wet my brush down just a little more, clean a little bit of the wash out of it. nice thing about doing this kind of stuff you don't really have to worry about getting it wet it's plastic it's just kind of just pushing it down and I might need to go back in little spots and darken up some seams folds wrinkles And then everywhere up here, I'm going to put it on pretty lightly. Stains that undershirt really nicely. Helps to separate the two. back with a pretty wet brush real quick. In a lot of the pictures, these red lines here were almost, I don't know, black, but I mean, they're not. They're, they're the same red as other parts, um, like of his helmet. So, it just kind of depends on the images you're looking at a lot of times. The lighting the image is taken in, all that stuff really can make a huge difference in how the color appears. So you want to look at a lot of different sources um, and then use your best judgment, right? It is still your model kit and is going to sit on your shelf, uh, unless it's for a client, I suppose. And if they're looking for screen accuracy, you want to have a conversation then about which shot from the movie they're talking about because depending on what they're thinking and what you're thinking is screen accurate depending on the scene you choose that could be different
So in, in that way, it's nice to just be able to build for yourself. But, you know, it's not like those are hard conversations to have when you're dealing with clients. But if those conversations don't happen, uh, there can end up being some challenging conversations. You know, and two people don't necessarily have the exact same image in their mind. Just cleaning off a lot of the excess. Uh, then you do again just want to have that conversation. Pretty good, I like that. Darken those folds up a little more. kind of fade naturally right it's cloth so I mean I there's going to I suppose be dirt spots but if I kind of clean my brush off and just taper it back I can end up with some very nice smooth transitions That's it. And then I think we are almost ready. Oh, can't forget. And then I suppose there's just a tiny amount of weathering that I'll need to do to the holster to just show a little bit of like, leather lines, some wear and tear. All right, I think that's nice. That should emphasize those edges pretty well. All right, now I think that should be good for our overall general weathering if I can ever actually make myself stop um, I like him he's good dirty looks like I think of when I think of Boba Fett um, I'm actually very happy with that I do hope in all of this that the quality of the video throughout the entire piece has continued to improve as I have continued to kind of figure out um, my new camera system. These last couple pieces are being recorded at 4K. Um, and so hopefully as I scale them down to 2K for normal video, um, I'll get really nice, clean, crisp detail. At least that's my hope um, so all right so in a few minutes as soon as all this is set up a few seconds the blink of an eye <laughs> I will be right back um, with final assembly all right so I believe our Mandalorian well Boba Fett I don't know, technically, was Boba Fett actually a Mandalorian? 
not sure. I think some of that might have changed in recent times. I think old school is that Boba Fett stole or beat a Mandalorian to take his armor. Don't remember for sure, but I am calling this model kit finished. Um, I do love that I went through and actually filled in all the joints. It, it, it makes sense to do that for this type of a model kit to me. Um, the stormtroopers with the joints make perfect sense, right? But for him, I don't know. It wasn't super visible, but I definitely like how this looks better. It looks just, I don't know, cooler. So I did a little bit of like leather edging on the holster. Um, when I put all of it together, the cape um, cloak piece felt like it fit in far enough um, that I'm not concerned. Uh, I was thinking I might have to actually trim the ball piece off uh, so that I could get it to sit all the way down, but I think that looks just fine. Um, I think he's going to look quite awesome paired with the base that I made. That base is actually for sale and available on my Etsy store. Not painted. <sighs> um, but this base that is basically styled after um, the floor of the, the carbonite chamber. Ooh, I did not notice. I don't know when I did that. Must have been when I was attaching either the backpack or the holster. Uh, the holster was a challenge to press on, but I think that seemed to have straightened out all right. And it's not going to get played with. So as long as it's not about to fall off, it should be good. All right? there is a little stress mark on it. Uh, but it's definitely not noticeable enough, I don't think, that I'm going to have to do anything about it. I think once that's on my shelf, I don't think you'll notice anything. Uh, I also cleaned up and glossed the black part of the face shield. Oh, and I put a big blob of gloss on the end, both ends of the scope to make it look like there's a glass piece there. Um, you can barely tell that there is red in the decal there. Um, but I did, you know, with the white behind it, that was the best chance that that was gonna work. All right, well, I believe this has been a very successful project. Um, it has been a very long project. I took a several kind of month break in the middle of it. Um, to move my office and then have mediocre quality results and then figure hopefully all of the video stuff out. Um, so I'm very hopeful that this will be a very good video at the end, even if it wasn't a fantastic quality uh, in the beginning. All right, no matter what, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate your time. Please hit the like button, please subscribe. Um, every, every time you guys hit the like button, it really does help the YouTube analytics to get my videos out to even more people. Uh, and hopefully someday I'll have enough following that I can actually start designing and selling some of my own model kits. That would be really, really cool. All right. Well, anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.